know the fortune cookie was actually an American invention. Wait, 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 wait. Fortune cookies were created by Chinese immigrants to America, and way before that, prizes and riddles were baked into cakes in China and other parts of Asia for decades, if not centuries. So you even got that wrong, Iron Man 3. Now, let's go over Iron Man 3 and what's wrong with the Marvel Cinematic Universe's Mandarin. This is your best friend in a baseball cap. And you'll never see the fans' disappointment coming. I admit to never having read an Iron Man comic book, though I have seen the cartoons. So I know who the Mandarin is in the mythology. Iron Man 3 was supposed to have the villain be the Mandarin, the real Mandarin. In the comics, the Mandarin is Tony Stark's equivalent to Lex Luthor, to what Lex Luthor is to Superman, Doctor Doom is to the Fantastic Four, the Joker is to Batman, and so on. There was a reason John Favreau decided not to put the Mandarin into the first movie. He was supposed to be the equivalent of Palpatine to Star Wars. There is a reason why the terror organization is called the Ten Rings in the first movie. There is a reason one of them helped Ivan Vanko escape in Iron Man 2. Now, the Mandarin was supposed to be the one who was behind it all, and I guess theoretically you could say uh, he still is. But he was not supposed to be an actor, so to act as a figurehead by a villain who in some ways is just ripping off the Riddler from Batman Forever! Wait, what exactly was the message politically from this movie? The answer in my mind keeps going back and forth, like a game of tennis or ping pong. Oh, and were you simply doing a low-down version ending? Uh, of The Dark Knight Rises with the kid getting a new work shed. The kid's supposed to be the, the, the next Iron Man in 20 years or so, right? Though I will admit that the kid in Tony's talks, they were good. And now to Aldrich Killian and the Mandarin. I will say this. If what Killian was done by a Bond villain, one, granted, who was not part of the original novels, because I can't see Blofeld without the cap or the monocle, or not being the real head of Spectre. I could see it as a great move in a movie. Misdirection and all, but that's basically you're giving us a watered-down version of Batman Begins. I mean, to take the number one nemesis and reduce him to being a drunk actor who doesn't know that people have died and are actually dying because of what the Ten Rings and AIM have done is just pathetic. Killigan saying at the end, I am the Mandarin, doesn't make it so. Not really, even in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, now I know it's a comic book movie universe, but I don't care that she was inser inserted with some fire toxin. That doesn't mean that Pepper should have been able to survive a 200 foot fall into a huge fire. Maybe if she had just been pushed into a small fire, I could buy her surviving, but not both. Oh, and by the way, if you take that thing next to his heart away, Tony is supposed to die. Didn't you see the Avengers? Anyway, 
That is Iron Man 3, and I am your best friend in a baseball cap. Oh, Shane, why are you making Iron Man like James Bond? We already have a guy like that in the movies. Mission Impossible's Ethan Hunt. 